Hi, I'm Maddie. Have you ever wondered why yawning is contagious or why we even yawn in the first place? I challenge you to make it to the end of this video without letting one out. <sighs> we yawn around 240,000 times in our lifetime and from 11 weeks old in the womb, which goes to prove that it's an involuntary action. But why do we do it? Yawning is generally associated with boredom and tiredness, but it actually increases your heart rate by about 30%. Studies have also revealed that it can lead to a heightened sense of arousal, increasing our brain activity, keeping us alert. When we combine a yawn with a stretch, it's called pandiculation. By contracting our muscles, we are relaxing them, increasing the blood pressure, and it's thought limbering ourselves up, which might be why it feels so good to have a good old stretch first thing in the morning. And actually, this is something we see across the animal kingdom. All vertebrates are known to yawn, and there are a variety of reasons as to why. Snakes are able to unhinge their entire head in order to eat a large meal, and afterwards, a yawn allows them to realign their jaw. Then there are the likes of hippos and primates, such as Hamadryas and yellow baboons, who yawn to expose their teeth and show dominance. And primates bring us on to contagious yawning. Mm. Have I got you yet? <laughs> Studies on chimpanzees support the idea that there is in fact a social element to catching a yawn. Chimpanzees have demonstrated that they're more likely to yawn along with a member of their own troop than with an unfamiliar face. And whilst juveniles and adults catch yawns contagiously, infants don't. And this correlates with our own yawning behaviour. Since contagious yawning starts around the age of four, the same time we develop cognitive abilities. Like chimps, we live within a social structure and have the ability to empathise. In fact, physiologists at the University of Connecticut found some interesting results when studying the differences in yawning behaviour between children with and without autism. In a setup experiment, researchers found that children without the condition yawned at the same rate an adult would. 23% of children with a mild form of autism copied yawns, and children diagnosed with full autism didn't yawn at all. And interestingly, yawning is a contagion that happens between owners and their dogs. Dogs are four times more likely to yawn along with a human they recognise than with a stranger, again suggesting there's some kind of emotional element involved. If you know a dog, then why not give it a go and let us know what happened in the comments below. <sighs> Scientifically speaking, we still have a lot left to learn about yawning and there are theories I haven't even touched upon, like it helps us to get rid of excessive carbon dioxide by drawing in more oxygen and in evolutionary terms that we used yawning for intimidation, much like we see in the animal world today. <sighs> If you made it through this whole video without yawning, I would be well impressed because I'm an absolute <laughs> state. Let me know in the comments below. Huh. For more amazing videos about science, then make sure you subscribe to Earth Unplugged and we'll see you soon. Which animal would you domesticate and for what purpose? Just imagine using a pelican to carry your shopping or a hippo to take the kids to school or maybe even a cheetah if they're running late. In preparation for hibernation, they pile on the pounds. In fact, throughout autumn, they will consume as much as 40 kilograms of food a day to gain weight. The more fat they can gain before hibernation, the better their chance of getting through the winter. It really is a case of survival of the fattest.